Mr. David Tyree. So I'm trying to screw this big fat chick the other day. I reach in her panties and get a handful of cracker crumbs. I said, excuse me, honey, what you doing cracker crumbs in your panty? She said, everything tastes better when it sits on rich. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's my test joke to see how tight your asses are in them chairs. Some of you people wanted to laugh and you said, no, I ain't laughing at that. <laughs> Let me tell y'all something, never hold back laughter. You hold in a laugh, it'll turn into a fart on the way home. <laughs> you be stinking up the car, everybody going, why you laugh when you had the chain? <laughs> Roll the damn window down over there. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. You heard Ray introduce me as Tyree? That's my name, but everybody calls me Folgers because I'm dark and rich. <laughs> you women can call me coffee because I grind so fine. <laughs> I feel good tonight. I know I look like shit, but I feel good. <laughs> I do feel good. I've been taking vitamins. I don't know if they're making me feel any better, but my pee show is pretty. <laughs> you can't find that color in your crayon box. Y'all look good, dude, look at you. There's nothing better for a performer than to walk into a room full of smiling, beautiful people. Just look at you. Couple of you motherfuckers are ugly, but... I ain't gonna point. Sorry I said motherfucker, it slips out every now and then. That's why black people can't host game shows. You never know when motherfucker's coming. Hey, come on, you hear the clock ticking? Spin the wheel, motherfucker. <laughs> Some of you are ugly, but ain't no sense in pointing at you because ugly people have no idea they're ugly. I don't think they do. I think God's pretty smart. Can you imagine being ugly, getting up in the morning, knowing damn well the toothbrush and hair combing and washing your face ain't gonna do a bit of good? <laughs> Standing in the mirror going, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> Most of y'all look good to me because I was in Oklahoma two weeks ago. And after Oklahoma, a Rottweiler in a wig would look good. You get a chance to go to Oklahoma, pass it up. There ain't shit in Oklahoma. I think Oklahoma's an old Indian word that means land of ugly bitches. I mean, great big... Fat ass, one tooth, scraggly head, three chili cheeseburger eating six times. <laughs> Calvin Klein can't give a pair of jeans away. <laughs> I was down there doing a benefit for tornado victims, y'all. Tornadoes went through Oklahoma, tore up the whole state, did over $150 worth of damage. <laughs> it leveled everything. I realized right there. God hates rednecks and trailer parks. He does, cause it's the same thing every year. Get that shit off my planet. Hey, hey, and what is it about digging in your ass makes your top lip go up? Everybody in Oklahoma got a finger up their butt going, hey. You wanna go fishing? <laughs> so it's good to be here in Cincinnati. Thin Cincinnati. This is a nice little city. It's small, but it's nice. I like it. Call it the Queen City. Must have a lot of fags here. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me. You can't say fag anymore. You gotta be politically correct. You gotta call them semen receptive. <laughs> but I like 
like your town. You, <laughs> you have a nice little town. I live in LA, thank you very much. I know y'all don't give a fat rat's ass where I'm from. You're probably thinking, well, they got a lot of earthquakes out there, yeah. The ground is shaking, but it's 85, motherfucker. <laughs> I like LA, LA's a nice place. We got shit out in California. They ain't got nowhere else in America. Number one, we got drive-by shootings. I'm proud of them kids. Except for the fact that they're always hitting the wrong people. I don't think they're bad kids, they're just bad shots. So what we're getting ready to do is open up some drive-by firing ranges for them kids. Gonna give them a place to practice, then let's set them out on each other. Got a lot of homeless people out there, too. Y'all ain't got no homeless here. I ain't seen them. You must sweep them away from the front of the hotel. <laughs> lot of homeless. We got to do something about the homeless, y'all, cause we're running out of shopping carts. <laughs> Can't go anywhere without tripping over them big, dirty feet all across the sidewalk. Y'all got quiet like you care, fuck you. You right, I shouldn't talk about the homeless, but they ain't here. It ain't like you gonna go outside, find one, say, hey man, you should heard what he said about you and this. I help homeless people, I, you know, I used to be homeless myself one time, down and out, didn't have shit happening in my life, you know, didn't have no money, I was so broke, I didn't even have no damn shoes. I'm feeling sorry for myself till I met a man with no feet. I thought to myself, I bet he got some shoes at home he don't need. I'm gonna follow this motherfucker home and get them shoes. I help homeless people, I want you to know that right now. It's these hungry sons of bitches that can kiss my ass. Piece of shit begging for food, help, I need something to eat. And I'll knock the shit out of one of them. Anybody that's hungry in this country is just stupid. You go in a grocery, they got one fat guy with no gun guarding all that food. All hungry people have to do is run in and eat something. Knock that man with no gun out of your way and head straight for the cookie aisle. Cause you can eat up a half a pack of cookies before anybody even know you're in there. I do that shit with money in my pocket. What happened to stealing in this damn country? What they gonna do if they catch you eating in the grocery? Take you to jail? Guess what they got in jail? Food. Your ass may be sore, but your belly'd be full. <laughs> I got a little pissed off the other day. Let me tell you good people what happened. You let me know if I was out of line. I was riding down the freeway out in LA. I was going about 90 miles an hour. Why? I got shit to do. But I got pissed off, cause in the next lane, there's some woman going 90. She looked over at me, reached over and locked her door. 90 mile now, how in the hell am I gonna get in that car? I missed my exit to give her the finger one more time. Go ahead. Did my good deed for the day, too. I caught a handicapped guy trying to park in one of our spots and I beat his ass. I did it for y'all, shit. Tried to get away in that wheelchair. I said, no, you don't, you man. I rolled him a half a block, too. Burn up his hands trying to stop that damn thing. Got a couple of questions to ask you before I get started in my real high-speed rock'em sock'em comedy. 
I want to hurry up because some of my shit's so funny, even I want to hear it again. <laughs> you ever been riding down the freeway or your highway here and see somebody in the process of moving? They got one of them open U-Haul trailers and you look in that trailer and think to yourself, wonder why they're keeping all that raggedy shit. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, like pea stains all on the mattress. The dresser's chipped up, the mirror's cracked. You know it ain't no antique. You just want to roll the window down and say, hey, don't you throw that shit away. Or move at night, damn it. Look at that shit you got there. People keep the damnedest thing. We're all like little pack rats. Got unnecessary clutter in our lives. I bet you everybody in this room, right here, right now, somewhere in your house, you got a stack of unpaid bills about that tall. <laughs> Don't you? I, listen, let me tell y'all something. If you ain't gonna pay that bill as soon as it comes in the mail, throw it in the trash. <laughs> They'll send you another one. You ain't gotta have shit worry in your hand. I don't pay them till they turn red. I don't give a damn. There's gotta be no worse feeling in the world than dying with your cable bill paid in advance. <laughs> when I die, I wanna owe every son of a bitch on the planet. I do, cause that way you live long after you're gone. <laughs> you people be mumbling your name, that motherfucker. <laughs> died, owed me $150. <laughs> I gotta slow down, get too damn loud in here. <laughs> Couple of things I saw in the paper, I saw where from now on midgets have to stop using tampons. <laughs> Seems they keep stepping on the string. <laughs> yeah, you're owing, but you'll be telling that shit tomorrow. <laughs> you know a good joke when you hear one. You know why you tell it? It's not just a joke, it's a picture in your head. You can see midgets walking down the street. <laughs> At home, opening the box going, I'm gonna cut this damn thing off of here. I'll fall on my big midget head. Another thing I saw, you know, we're a complaining society. All we do is whine about shit. We always talk about we ain't got enough money, yet we waste so much money. I saw some university did a survey. They spent over $900,000 and found out that a homosexual's favorite bird is a swallow. <laughs> now, I'm going to have to waste the money, ain't it? Surprised me, though, because I thought it'd be a cockatoo. You know, also, th since you laughed at that joke, let me tell you one more. <laughs> I was thinking, you know, you never see a homeless homosexual. I see you people scanning your brains for a point of reference right now. <laughs> you ain't never seen a homeless homosexual. I guess if you give good head, somebody let you stay with them. <laughs> if you're going, ain't no sense in you sleeping outside tonight. <laughs> Bring your monkey ass on in here, baby. Does anybody in here know who Jack shit is? People keep telling me I don't know Jack shit. I gotta... Started to sing when I came up here, but I noticed there was a lot of white people in the room. Wouldn't be able to clap on time, and I said, I don't want a bunch of white people fucking up my song. I'm just kidding. I don't know shit about singing. I thought John Cougar Mellencamp was a place you send retarded kids for the summer. Go play, baby. Go play.
Everybody's drinking. How come the front row ain't got no drinks? What the hell am I in? Got to get the front row some drinks. You white people ain't drinking? Because if it was black people with no drink, they'd be raising hell right now. See, white people are just so patient. Black people, hey, motherfucker. I've been here half hour. My shit ain't here yet. Everybody drinking, having a good time? I like drinking people. Drinking people are the best people. You sober sons of bitches, kiss my black ass. I can't stand no club soda, Perrier ordering piece of shit. Anybody that pays $4 for a glass of water is a dumb motherfucker. I love drinking people, cause you know, you talk to a sober person, Every time you talk to them, they talk about the same damn thing. <laughs> At least drunk people change the subject. <laughs> well, they got to, they don't know what the fuck they're talking about anyway. <laughs> and I like to loan money to drinking people cause you loan money to a drunk man, you can get paid back four or five times. <laughs> Just catch him drunk and say, hey, you got that 20 you owe me? <laughs> I, I thought I paid you. <laughs> No, you didn't pay me. Give me my shit right now. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Anybody here besides me going to bed so drunk when you wake up, you're surprised you're still alive? <laughs> oh, you got a big ring of white, crusty shit on your lip. You got to scrape it off with your thumbnail. Mouth is all dry, feel like you've been drinking hot dog water. <laughs> you ever made that mistake? Come home, think your wife made some chicken broth? <laughs> you take a big swig, he goes, ha! The inside of your mouth is coated for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking so drunk, you slept in your clothes. on the floor, you get up, you got rug prints in your face. <laughs> Pack of cigarettes in every pocket. <laughs> and you don't even smoke. Do <laughs> Who shit is this? <laughs> it happens to me a lot, I get drunk, man. You know when you get shit faced like that and you get home, what's the first thing on your mind when you're home? Okay, second thing. Tuna sandwich would take care of both your problems. <laughs> you get hungry, you want to eat something, right? But you can't cook drunk. You try to cook, you might burn your house down. Cause you do dumb shit when you're drunk. You'll fry oatmeal. You will. Sit down, honey, I ain't got time to boil this. I'm fucked up. You want some of these oatmeal pancakes? I'll fix two for me and two for you. <laughs> I came home about two weeks ago damn near horizontal. You know how you lean into shit when you fuck that? I'm stepping over invisible shit. I was so drunk, I ordered $3,000 worth of junk from that home shopping store. And I was hungry too. So I had a great big old five pound brick of Velveeta cheese. And you know when you're home drunk, the last thing on your mind, you're not concerned with being neat. You don't really give a shit. <laughs> Slicing the cheese and getting some crackers and putting it on a plate. Man, I'm leaning over the sink, shoving it in. <laughs> I had cheese up on my eyebrow. And I've been feeling kind of sluggish ever since. <laughs> cheese don't move quite like it should. <laughs> You could put a quart of prune juice on top of cheese. It ain't going nowhere. Just stuck there, huh? Two, three days. Every once in a while, you're here. <laughs> and 
And cheese eating late at night is dangerous, ain't it? Man, shit, they ought to put a warning label on cheese. That's the stuff dreams is made of, man. Caution, do not consume after 12, you drunk son of a bitch. I had a terrible nightmare after eating that cheese. I dreamed I was white. See, some of y'all didn't laugh like you think that's what black, black people sit around wishing they was white. That's a goddamn lie. That's some frightening shit, boy. Let me tell you why it scared me so bad. In this dream, I had on a three-piece pinstripe, shitty-looking suit. <laughs> had on some wingtip shoes. I was sitting behind a desk. Must have had a job, I don't know. <laughs> I had my calculator in my hand and I was balancing my checkbook. Nobody laughed. Let me explain this joke to you people. Black people, as a rule, do not balance a checkbook. We got checks, and we got money. Especially on the weekend. Gone right, and ain't nobody gonna know the Monday. I snuck in a Klan meeting last week. Well, it was full costume. I said, what the hell, I'm going. What a bunch of stressed out sons of bitches they are, boy. There is a lot of tension in the air when you go to one of them damn meetings. They're a little pissed off, huh? I guess it must be rough going through life, watching the world pass you by, you peeping out the holes of a sheep. <laughs> Shit is zooming by you. You got no peripheral vision? You know there's a rumor going around that black and white were all the same. That's a damn lie. We're different as night and day. Pardon the pun, I didn't mean it like that. But we are different. I think we evolved from different species. I think black people do indeed come from apes. Cause I feel the jungle in me all the damn time. And I think you white folks come from fish. Cause you smell funny when you get wet. Now that's just my way of letting you white people know you ain't the only one sitting around making up shit about other people. We do it too. We different in a lot of ways though, you know what I'm saying? One thing we're different, if you fuck around with somebody black, it's always a one-on-one -on -one confrontation. If you fuck with somebody black, you know, they say, listen, motherfucker, you keep fucking with me, I'm gonna pop a cap in your monkey ass. <laughs> you gotta make a decision right there whether to pursue the matter or back up. <laughs> but when you fuck around white people, you never know what you're gonna get. You fuck around somebody white, they go, hey, listen, you motherfucker. <laughs> You keep fucking with me, I'm gonna come to work and kill everybody at the office. <laughs> Here's another thing I noticed about being different. Black people have no business on The Price is Right. Listen, we've been out of work so long, we don't know what shit costs. I watched the Price is Right the other day. There was a brother on there. The three prizes was a dune buggy, a case of faultless spray starch, and a year's supply of Washington apples. The brother said, $39,500. I'm trying to turn the TV on, boy. Oh, <laughs> you know how the audience goes, Bob even said, you mean $3,900, huh? <laughs> and the brother was adamant. He said, no! $39,500. <laughs> I said, that's it. I ain't watching this shit no more. <laughs> oh, 
so we are different. You ever burp and smell something you don't remember eating? It didn't stink, but it kind of burnt a little bit. It had celery in it. I ain't had celery since Thanksgiving. Has it ever crossed your mind that you might have two sets of guts? See, you people with jobs don't have time to sit around and think about shit like that. But when you do this kind of work and you ain't got no job, you got free time like a motherfucker. <laughs> think of the dumbest shit. Let me explain what I'm talking about. Say on Monday you have a pizza. And on Tuesday, you make yourself a tuna noodle casserole. Wednesday, here come the casserole. And you're going, what the fuck happened to that pizza? There it is. I gotta slow down a little bit. I'm talking too damn fast here. <laughs> I was recently in Japan. I go to Japan every year, no special time, just whenever I'm sick and tired of feeling short. <laughs> yeah, they call me Kareem over there. They don't know. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Kareem, at Kareem. <laughs> you goddamn right, you little toehead shit. <laughs> I'm at the point now where I'd like to smack a Jap, you know? I'm getting pissed off at these Japanese. Now, I don't want any Japanese in here tonight to take it personal. It's the whole bunch of you sons of bitches I'm talking about. I think there's a plot in Japan to knock off all the black people in America. I do, because they make them radios too big and heavy for us to carry. This shit ain't portable no more. Black people are checking in hospitals. I don't know, doc, my neck is killing me. I got a pain run from here, way right back from here. And black people, black people don't go to chiropractors because most of us can't even say it. That's a hard word for us to say. I had a friend, back was hurting, told me he was going to choir practice. I said, I didn't know you were singing where you singing. He said, singing? I, singing? I ain't singing my back hurt. Going to choir practice. And don't ask me no more. That's another thing I gotta correct you white people. Listen black people, I'm gonna tell them. I'm gonna tell them right now. We got them here right now. We're gonna straighten all this shit out right now. White people, watch me. Ask. Ask, ask. Don't clap. It ain't for clapping. It's for... We can say the word ask. We just like to fuck with you. We see white people coming, we go, here they come, here they come, here they come. Hey, come here, let me ask you something. On the way back from Japan, I stopped in Honolulu. I had a little time to kill, so I took a walk along the sands of Waikiki. And let me tell you something. I've never seen so many eyesores in all my life. Beached whales just laying mounds of flesh all over the sand. I think some things should be kept sacred, y'all. I don't care how much money you got. If you're fat and ugly, stay home. I felt so sorry for the sand with all that cellulite laying on top of it. that I wrote a poem about fat people. I'd like to share that with you now. It's called Fatso and it's by me. Fatso, Fatso, have you no shame? Your fingers are so chubby you can't write your fucking name. You break out in beads of sweat just walking across the street. And the thought of a Big Mac makes your heart skip a beat. <laughs> fatso, fatso, God will punish you for sitting at the table and eating like a fool. Bad glands, you say, and that is why. 
you eat till your elbow hurts. You stuff and stuff your big fat face popping buttons on all your shirts. Yes, tubby tubby. Tis far too oft you sup. Your belly bumps your wee wee and your ass keeps swelling up. Well, old blimp, it won't be long and you won't be around. Your heart will get pissed off at you and drop your fat ass on the ground. <laughs> Y'all know I didn't write that for anyone other than myself. You know that, don't you? <laughs> Getting fat to some bitch. You know, fat ain't like ugly. You may not know you're ugly, but you damn sure know you're fat. If you don't... <laughs> You gotta keep buying bigger shit, damn it. You know your ass all swole out of shit. You can tell you're getting fat too. One way to tell you're getting fat, if you're sitting on the toilet and both legs go to sleep. <laughs> Happened to me, I tried to get up, my knees buckled, banged my head in the sink. Had toilet paper hanging out my ass. Look like a black kite coming out the bed. <laughs> but I ain't gonna exercise. I'm kind of like everybody else. I'm just gonna let the weight fall off by itself. <laughs> I think it's stupid to exercise your entire life and then end up dead anyway. When I die, I wanna be in bad shape. I do, I wanna look dead when I'm dead. I don't want anybody at my funeral walking by the coffin going, Dave look good. <laughs> I don't want that. I want everybody to come in and go, damn, what happened to him? <laughs> wow, look at that shit there, boy. Sign the book and let's get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> that way you know you're dead. Won't nobody be sitting around going, wake him up. <laughs> oh, wake him up. You'll be going. Have you looked at this, Mama? <laughs> he is not getting up. <laughs> I got a pinched nerve in my neck. I was trying to give myself some head the other day. <laughs> I done, I done, I done tweak some. <laughs> you know, God's pretty smart. That's why he gave me a little dick. Cause if I had a big dick, I wouldn't get shit done. I'd be sitting at home trying to suck my own dick all day. God knows what he's doing, boy. Not that you're interested, but I bought myself a new car about a month ago. I used to own a Mercedes. I ran into a pool about three o'clock in the morning, drunk on the son of a bitch. Uh, the funny thing about it was I hit the pole with the front and the back of the car, same damn pole. <laughs> car was that big and I just got out of it. Dust myself off cause I was fucked up. <laughs> Some sober sons of bitches always get killed in wrecks. <laughs> drunk people, hey, what the fuck was that? I learned something when I wrecked my car. Has anybody in here ever lost anything, looked everywhere and couldn't find it? Get in a wreck. Man, shit comes flying out from under the seat. <laughs> Things you ain't seen in years. You could be cut and bleeding to death. Hey, there's my comb. <laughs> I've been looking all over for that. Guy. Everything's under your seat, y'all. You hit somebody, man, you got french fries with hair wrapped around. You got quarters with some brown sticky stuff on it. I don't know what that brown sticky stuff is. I ain't never smelt my fingers after I picked one up. See, I'll never buy another Mercedes because I realize also with a Mercedes, you feel more important going someplace than you do after you get there. Once you get out and shut the door, you just another asshole. 
People have no idea what kind of car you came in when you're walking around in Kmart. They don't know. They'll run over your feet with the cart. They don't give a fuck about it. Well, let me talk a little bit about getting old before I get out of here. Because I'm getting old. Some of you men are getting old. I'm going to speak for the men because I don't know how women tell they're getting old. Maybe your lips don't touch no more. I don't know. <laughs> the people are slow, but you're here, and that's important. <laughs> so you can sit on the edge of a chair and hang two. Men can tell we're getting old. A lot of things start changing. A little subtle things at first, like, well, like words mean different things. But I, I'm so old, I can remember when crack was a sexual reference. <laughs> Man, you got caught smoking crack when I was a kid, you was in big trouble. <laughs> I don't want you young people to make the same mistake I made. I retired from age 25 to 40. I just said, fuck it, I ain't doing nothing else. <laughs> I changed my mind, now I gotta work till I drop dead. <laughs> now I'm a little pissed because the life expectancy of a black man in America is only 65 years old. I have no idea why I'm paying Social Security. <laughs> Some old white man will be down in Miami cashing my check. <laughs> Give me hundreds, the spots is dead. <laughs> two fifties and two hundreds. It's good to see y'all, look at you. I'm glad y'all came out tonight. God damn, you look good to me. <laughs> ben, have you ever seen one of those women where you know your bottom lip just got, <laughs> you know, like even if you're with your wife, you can't keep a damn. <laughs> look at this bad motherfucker here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I saw one at the airport. She, she looks so good, you know, it's the kind of woman you just like to take her panties home and make some soup. <laughs> You can walk around all day going. Man. You know what I'm talking about? I've been looking. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. I want to talk about getting old because this is important for all the men in the room. I don't know. I'm not going to speak for women. I'm going to speak for men because Lord knows we need a voice now. Because we ain't got shit to say to nobody no more. The women are running all this goddamn shit. Oh, fuck you. Shut the fuck up. It wasn't good enough. You Now you got two paychecks. You got the man and yours. You know why? Because you got the pussy. Man, come on, honey. Here's my money. Can I have $20 to go drinking? Please. <laughs> <laughs> men are so goddamn weak, they make me sick with that shit. I gotta have some pussy, what am I gonna do? But I'm gonna speak for me because the, the little subtle things that we go through as we get older are, I think they're fun. One way to tell you get to know if you're a man is you can't spit as far as you used to. <laughs> See, men spit, that's what we do from the cradle to the grave. <laughs> See, that's what we do. You never see women spit. No, not ladies anyway. Them barfly bitches sometimes. <laughs> you see them come out of a club drunk. <laughs> Where are we going, honey? <laughs> Get your ass in the car and shut up. <laughs> but real ladies never spit. All you ever hear is... <laughs> but men spit because we ain't swallowing nothing even look like that stuff. <laughs> and when you're young, you got so much power, you just... <laughs> you can chuck a water snot across the street. <laughs> You can, but then when you get older, you lose all your power. You try to spit, when you get older, you go, ah, fuck. <laughs> Jesus. 
That's why you always see an old man with a handkerchief. You know that spit ain't gonna get no further than his bottom lip. Another thing you notice when you get older, things just start hurting, you know? I mean, you get pain from nowhere. You could be standing somewhere and just mind your own damn business. And just shit hurts. Ouch! I ain't standing over there no more. Shit just hurt, huh? You learn to be quiet when you get older. See, see young men don't know what be quiet means. You tell a young man to be quiet, he want to fight you. Yeah, they always say, young, dumb, full of cum, don't know shit from shampoo. That's why their hair stinks. <laughs> tell a young man to be quiet. Oh, who you tell him to be quiet? Kick your ass. <laughs> tell an old man to be quiet, just watch what he does. Just back up. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I didn't have shit to say anyway. <laughs> Cause old men ain't fighting no more. We can still fight, we just can't take a punch. Serious, we could win a fight, but like hurt for six years after that. <laughs> Man, you really kicked his ass. Well, I know, but now I can't move this arm. I got a pee and I'm right-handed. I never touch my dick with my left hand. Let me give you young men a good idea when it might be best to keep your mouth shut. You know, there are times when it's just not you know, in your best interest to open that trap. <laughs> Say one day you get on the elevator. There's a man standing there in his underwear. <laughs> He's got an ax in one hand <laughs> and a great big booger hanging out of his nose. <laughs> this is a good time to try being quiet. <laughs> Don't try none of that macho stuff with this man cause he's got other shit on his mind. <laughs> now when I say a booger, I notice a lot of people in the room got quiet. <laughs> you can actually see people's heads snap back. <laughs> people are afraid of boogers, huh? <laughs> they are scared to death of booger. You ain't never turned on the news and <laughs> pick a 40 pound booger kills 12. <laughs> A booger has hurt nobody that I've ever heard of, but everybody in the room scared of boogers, ain't you? I bet you could rob a bank with a booger. You don't need a gun, just walk in and say, all right, everybody up against the wall. Get your monkey ass back over. People in the bank are backing up. What the fuck are you doing? Hey! Jesus, that's nasty. What do you want? The police come and say, hey, wait a minute. How'd he get all the money? Man, he had a booger on his finger. Trying to put it on my jacket, that ain't my money. <laughs> Another way to tell you get no, this is a good one. Cause this is gonna be reality for some of you guys. One day after years of marriage, you're gonna be walking around the house naked. Your wife is gonna look at you and say, Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> Put your clothes on. All that hanging down there, you're scaring the fish. Look at the fish. You know everything in that tank is magnified. <laughs> but the best way to tell you getting old is one day you'll be sitting on the toilet and your nuts are hanging in the water. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you guys right now, a sadness will come over you. It's like a wave of, oh, Because life as you know it has come to a screeching fucking halt. The water's cold. You feel like you're making tea. Trying to think if I forgot anything. I don't think so. I think I said everything I wanted to say. This has been more fun than eating watermelon in a rented car for me, y'all. I don't remember the last time I had so much fun.
Y'all never did that? Rent a car and just go buy a watermelon and go for a ride? Never did that? Hey, I love it. Just spit them seeds all inside that car. But you care. It ain't your damn car. Just fuck it up. Take it back. I like to rent cars just to do things to it. I wouldn't do them on damn car. I rented one about a month ago. Took it out on the highway, got it up to 90 and just threw it in reverse. <laughs> just to see what happened. I don't give a shit. Ain't my car. It jerked real like this. About 10 miles later, it starts smoking real bad. I took it back, I said, give me another one then. Something wrong with this one. Here's another thing y'all need to know. You ever need new tires and you ain't got no money? Let's rent a car. Take it home, switch all them tires and take it back. Man, you got $800 worth of tires for $39.95. Somebody in this room right now is going, I'm gonna do that. That's a good idea. I got a letter from Hertz. They said, please don't do that joke no more. Please. I wrote them back, fuck you. <laughs> and I mean that in a nice way, you son of a bitch. I have a question for me. You ever been in a hurry, jump in the car real fast and sit on your nuts? <laughs> I've been feeling queasy all day. Well, it's about time for me to go. You guys have been wonderful. But before I go, I want to talk about something that's real important. Alcohol. We got to raise the speed limit. 55 is too slow. <laughs> you drive 55, you'll be the last one home. 55 is too slow, especially when you're drunk. You pull out on the highway, you want to hear them little dots going by. You ain't got time for cluck, 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 cluck. <laughs> you want to hurry up and get home before you run into something. <laughs> Most of us are driving 75 and 80 anyway, and ain't nobody got on that damn seatbelt. You see it hanging out the door with sparks flying from the bucket. <laughs> you don't wear that seatbelt, you know, in all honesty, because if you're in an accident, you'd rather be killed. You know, there's no sense in being alive if your car's all fucked up. <laughs> you're better off dead unless you got no self-respect and you're willing to ride a bus. <laughs> you know what I like about alcohol? It's a great crutch, you know? Sober people, if they fuck up, they got nothing to blame it on but their damn stupid self. You still drunk, you can say, I was fucked up. <laughs> I, hey, listen, I, I was sorry. I know I need some help. And I'm going to get some help as soon as I finish this drink right here. <laughs> you can get away with a lot of shit and just blame it on alcohol. You can hit on your best friend's wife and walk away. Friends will threaten you. Put their finger all up in your face and say, God damn it, you know. Okay. Hey, I was out of line. I know I was. But I was fucked up. Let me tell you what happened, goddammit. We were at a party. Your wife asked me for a ride home. Hell, I thought she wanted me to poke her. <laughs> you were out of town, and man, that's what friends are for. <laughs> you ain't gonna let a little thing like pussy come between us. <laughs> See, look at you hypocrites. Get quiet when I say pussy, shame on you. Everybody in here thinking about pussy, but nobody want to talk about it. <laughs> Damn shit. All right, brother, I'm fucking this cat. You just hold up the tail. <laughs> pussy is a wonderful thing. We got to stop being hypocrites and so damn uptight about it. Let's all say pussy together on three. <laughs> say pussy on three and set yourself free. <laughs> One, two, three. Pussy! Feels good, don't it? It'd be great if we could just say it any time we want to do without any repercussions, you know, like being McDonald's and say, yeah, let me have a Big Mac, some fries, a Coke, and some pussy. <laughs> I'll bet you they bring your food so damn fast. 
like, hey, man, get that. We ain't got no pussy here. <laughs> pussy is wonderful. And I don't want women to be offended by me using the word pussy. Because I think you're sitting on the most important thing on this planet. I do. They, you know, all the time you're growing up, they tell you money is the most important thing. That's a goddamn lie. Pussy is the most important. Pussy will make a motherfucker go get some money. Cause ain't no self-respecting, goal-setting woman gonna fuck a broke motherfucker. Unless they're married to him, then they feel obligated. Hey, you know, I live here, I guess I gotta fuck you, huh? Come on, you piece of shit. And it's the only word I use. I wouldn't trust a man coming over to my house saying, hey, Dave, let's go get some vagina tonight. If I heard a man use the word vagina, I'd call the police. I would, you know, they, he ain't well. I'd be like, yeah, there's a guy here looking for vagina. No, he ain't no doctor. I don't know what the hell he's doing. And it's funny how the word pussy is taboo. You know, like, as long as you use the word pussy as a noun or a pronoun, nobody cares. But once you make it a direct object, then everybody mad at you. You know what I'm talking about? Like you could be in a football game. Guy miss a tackle. The whole stadium will stand up at the same time and yell, you fucking pussy! <laughs> Cost me a hundred dollars! <laughs> Nobody says anything, but then you say something like, man, I sure would like to get some of that pussy. <laughs> then everybody mad at you. Hey, goddammit, don't be saying pussy like that. <laughs> Strange. Pussy is wonderful. I would just, I love pussy, but I wouldn't want one for myself. You know what I mean? I like having the dick. The dick is fine. Cause you know, you ain't got to do a whole lot with the dick. You know, you get up in the morning, thump it, it's clean. And you just take a rag and buff it up a little bit. But the upkeep on a pussy is outrageous, ain't it? Really? You go in a grocery store, they got a whole aisle dedicated to the maintenance of pussy. You can't find a dick aisle nowhere in America. Go in your grocery store here and say, excuse me. Where y'all keep all your dick stuff? You see heads snapping around. What, what, what you looking for? Well, I want to know if y'all carry that new mint nut dip they just came out. You get your ass out of the grocery. Don't come back in here. My name is David Tyree. Thank you, people, very much.